Tank Squad is awesome. Hello again there, friends and fans. Raptor here. Welcome to our first look at a game coming soon to Steam, but available now in a free demo until the end of the week. Tank Squad is a single-player to four-player cooperative tank battle simulator along the lines of, like, for example, War Thunder and Hell Let Loose. Somewhere between those two, a prime example of both the combat both against the tank and also the environment around you with infantry supporting and against you to try to destroy your tank. But what this game really does well is simulates the downtime between battle, like doing repairs and having to get upgrades and buy different camos and, you know, install things for your tank. And doing so with a crew and trying to perform effectively with your friends is pretty damn cool. Marking targets and taking out objectives and basically giving intel reports on what's around you is an incredibly important aspect of games like Foxhole and also Hell Let Loose, but is incredibly important in Tank Squad. Very, very difficult, very challenging alone. Everything is trying to destroy your tank from enemy AT, uh, both in bazooka form, AT gun, and tanks that overwhelm you, and uh, it's a very challenging game for sure. Now this demo is really nice. It actually has a few things that I want to show you now. There's a whole training section, but uh, yeah, there's a campaign and a single player mode available with multiple maps just for the demo. So quite a stellar one and something that caught my eye at the Steam Next event. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss out on any more free demos and or upcoming games to Steam. Smash that like button for more people to find Tank Squad and many other great World War II games. And thank you very much for watching and becoming members. Now, let's jump in to our first look at Tank Squad. So here we are at our forward operating base or our outpost that we can return to between missions where we can, of course, repair our tank. We can also refuel it and take it out on a little bit of a test drive. Now, again, we have our access now to a Tiger, Panzer IV and a Panzer III, I believe, and we can repair all of our tanks over here. Now, remember, this game is, uh, I think, playable up to four players, so that's why we have ourselves three, rather four repair cranes here closest to me over here one way off in the distance to where we can uh, park our tank and do repairs on everything we can even lift up the turret and uh, of course grab ammo grab fuel drive them around a little bit and act as if we're kind of on our downtime between missions to where things like obviously repairs and whatnot must take place and the crew is going to be responsible for some of those things as well as uh, bringing the tank to and from missions from this location. So, pretty cool. Uh, there certainly is a few people to talk to and a few places to go. We can get fuel from multiple locations over there, get intel on our next mission. And there's a little bit of kind of like a, I guess, a training ground here a little bit. It's just basically a junkyard, but uh, you can drive around a little bit. But the map right now is a slight smaller and restrictive for, you know, leaving the battlefield. But pretty cool that they put it in. I mean, there's like some captured enemy equipment over here too, like a uh, Garad. Also got ourselves a couple of Opal Blitz trucks and half tracks and whatnot over here. Oh, look at that. Even a motorcycle. Cool. MG42 right on top there. So, yeah, if we want to, we can spawn any vehicle and we can hit F to interact. And then you can see all the uh, different tanks that we can spawn right now. So Panzer 3s, Panzer 4s. 
or even a Panzer H1. And uh, we could even capture enemy tanks and repair them here too. And so obviously the Germans and the Soviets are the two available factions for now. But with this uh, being from the same folks who uh, made a tank simulator in the past, there is a chance we could see maybe British tanks, American tanks, and open up a whole maybe North Africa campaign or the Normandy campaign too, and bring in different missions and whatnot. So let's go ahead and just spawn one of these uh, Panzer IV, or rather, uh, Tigers HQ, and let's go ahead and see if we can bring that out. Tells us all the controls we need. Uh, but yeah, certainly feels a lot like uh, maybe Hell Let Loose at this point. But the shooting and the driving and whatnot kind of feel a little bit more like War Thunder and a little bit like World of Tanks. So, uh, but yeah, beautiful tank and uh, well modeled here for sure. Some of the sounds certainly could be improved a bit, but I think this is something that at least shows a lot of potential for being a very fun uh, co-op PvE type game. So if we jump into the tank here, we can actually uh, jump into the driver's hatch or we can jump up here into the commander's uh, hatch up here too. Yep, and then we can drive the tank around. So we've started with a random amount of fuel. It's different each time. This time it's just 87%, and uh, well, it looks like we're pretty fully loaded with ammunition too, including the uh, MG34 there and uh, some smoke uh, grenades. We also have ourselves a tow rope, so if one of our friends gets into trouble, we can also tow them around. But uh, yeah, we can fully drive around this area, fire up the engine, and then go get fuel or park right next to our... Um, kind of field HQ and get a mission or something like that. Now, I've got to say the sound effects certainly need a little bit of work in terms of the balance between like being on foot as a tank crewman just walking around the base and the engine itself. I mean the slapping of the mud is louder than that of the tank but those are I think some easy things to tweak that will just take a little bit of time. Less important of course than the overall game mechanics and the amount of tanks that we get access to and again this is just a demo so it's hard to really judge it at the moment but it certainly is promising that up to four players can enter a battlefield and then have multiple battlefields to both attack and defend and possibly to push multiple optional objectives and get extra money now what's interesting here in this game too is that yeah we actually get money in the game and that allows us to buy things like uh, fuel and upgrades and whatnot the Wehrmacht doesn't take care of that no that's uh, you you have to buy that you do it not not uh, not the German army you you so uh, all the money that you get from extra objectives and uh, completing all the main objectives go right back here to buying repair parts, munitions, and of course fuel too. We're going to go ahead and pull in right here and, uh, ooh, wow, look at that. Let's actually fire off some smoke grenades and see how that looks. Well, I've uh, hit it a few times, but oh, there we go. Ah, they just take a little bit of time. It's not immediate. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> Yeah, it actually works for concealment during the battle, too. And we can fire our main gun and whatnot here as well. Uh, fire off. There we go. Fire those off into the into the trees. Perfect. So we've stopped our engine. We're ready to refuel. We can fuel here. We can buy our amount percentage-wise. So uh, if we buy up to 100%, it's only going to cost us 70 Cool. Now, I believe our tanks are also customizable, too, in the future, though not available in the demo. We can pull the tanks up to a particular section, I think, maybe over uh, here or there, where we can customize decals and change the camo. Uh, that implies that there's going to be winter warfare and maybe some other seasons, too. So, obviously, summer is going to be a little bit then, uh, different than fall or winter in terms of how you want to set up your tank. And maybe um, the mission briefings, too, might... Uh, change what equipment you bring into the battle as well. So, uh, yeah, here's all of our ammo. No vehicle in the parking zone. So we have to refill it from there. From directly where we, uh, where we are. There we go. Thank you, sir. So, where's the parking zone here? Actually, I don't even see it. Maybe just in front? Right here? Yeah. So anyway, this is where we get all of our munitions for the tank. Also small munitions, like for the MG... 34 and possibly a 42 although I don't know if the upgrade for uh, having an MG 42 up on the turret on top of it is uh, an option but of course the MG 34 in the hull and there should also be one inside the turret as well uh, so there should be multiple options for guns all over the Tiger but of course the Panzer 4 Panzer 3 also have those options too but Vivant Tiger so let's bring it into battle and see how it goes 
So dropping into the main menu again, we're going to take a look here then at uh, some of the options for how to play. Now, the current demo allows us to do single-player missions. We can also do a single-player campaign, which will begin just like how we had seen the repair section before. But there's an option to skip that if you'd wish to then only do that in between missions. And then, of course, there's a cooperative campaign and a cooperative uh, single-player missions, too. Or, you know, singular missions where you can just go into one particular mission and then go back to the lobby in order to pick something else so if we pick a single mission currently there's only three missions available for uh, the demo but i think that's plenty enough to see the different types of uh, things that they have planned here you can see over on the right side we have ourselves airstrikes and off-map artillery and things that we can uh, earn by defeating the enemy and then we have our primary and secondary objectives like capturing the hill destroying enemy artillery and the battle could change at any moment. Enemy counterattacks can come in, or infantry can try to flank you and get behind to your lines, and or try to flank your tank too. So some of the early missions involve you fighting against AT, that is uh, like bazooka level, like anti-tank infantry that will be hiding nearby. Anti-tank guns, tanks, artillery, all those things will try to stop you. So it's going to be quite the battle. Uh, of course, we can adjust a few of the settings. Uh, in the future, I think that we can modify possibly difficulty and number of tanks that will be facing us. But let's start with the outskirts of Morton and try to capture that from an unknown enemy. Well, it's uh, going to be the Soviets, so let's jump in. All right, we're here finally in the battle. Let's go ahead and jump in. We have options to select individual units or squads, which can be under uh, multiple player commands. I think we might be able to give commands to other tanks. Or at least that's the way I think it should work in the future. With our spawn here set to the eastern side, our goal then is to capture Morton and destroy the AT guns that are just south of there. Objectives listed on the left side. We can even enter a spectator view. And uh, yeah, many a tank battle I think will be waiting for us in the future in this game. Uh, all the way up to Kursk and possibly maybe, I don't know, the end days in Berlin or something. It'd be interesting to see maps of that size. We can come back here for resupply. And we can even go into uh, kind of a first-person mode in the commander view and also from the uh, tank turret as well. Lower left side, I see that it says gunner, loader, driver, and radio operator. I do wonder if it'll be something along the lines of Hell Let Loose or perhaps Red Orchestra, if you remember that game, with people being able to play the role from inside the tank and not necessarily uh, have to be multiple tanks. But, of course, that's the way it's meant to be played with up to four players commanding at least a tank and perhaps some other tanks to uh, support them. All right, obviously the road's going to be a trap here with the AT guns to the right, so we're going to glance a little bit to the left and see if we can prowl in these, uh, yeah, raptor in the tall grass now. Oop, I see an enemy tank right in front of us already, although it is hard to see. There we are. Boom. Oh, he shot at us too. Well, two hits, but uh, no damage for us. Ready. Oh, a little high. Oh, wow. Okay, so the uh, gun will actually rotate quite a bit away from its original firing position. And uh, that tank does look like it's taken some damage. Hit him again. Ready. So over on the right side, that green plus. Oh, hello, enemy. Oh, and we've got ourselves some uh, AT in front of us. Oh, wow, look at that. AT crews out in the open. Hold on. we got a threat bigger than the tanks to worry about at the moment. There's a large group of uh, AT out there, bazooka men, in the tree line and in the grass in front of us. I saw some movement over to the right, I'm pretty sure. At this point, it'd be great to have some infantry support, but we can, of course, uh, as I'd been mentioning, call up all sorts of different uh, artillery and... Let's go ahead and take this tank out here, finally. Get a good shot on him. There we go. Woo, okay. So yeah, penetration values marked with the white crosshair, things like that can be activated and deactivated. Very difficult to kill those AT. They can crawl anywhere. And of course, uh, kill markers like that can also be removed. So you can adjust the UI to your liking and make it a little bit more realistic if you so choose. Got to be a tank over here somewhere. Indeed there is. All the way off in the distance. Look at that. 
Turn down our mouse sensitivity. This is very sensitive, almost like firing a sniper rifle, not an actual tank. Perfect. Yeah, all right, so we have some AT guns in front of us. And the town to the right, a simple operation. Oh, lots of infantry there. Would be quite cool to have a little bit more command over the battle and tell our troops to push forward. There could be options for that. And I hope that certainly is the thing. We're going to switch to HE now and come up behind those AT guns. Ready. Which could be over there. There they are. Beautiful shot. Quite a few killed there. Got to be another one. Ready. And I hope we also get Panther tanks in the future, too. Beautiful. AT guns destroyed. All right, let's switch back to AP. So other games that are like this include Men of War Assault Squad and Call to Arms where you can also take third and first person control of tanks and it does have a lot to do with the same mechanics of what you'd expect in War Thunder. It feels pretty close to that, not you know quite the full experience, but in terms of dealing with the armor penetration and firing HE, like for example at a house, we can see a soldier there, but if we fire HE nearby, of course he'll die that way. The MGs are so hard to hit anything, so uh, if we arm with HE and start unloading on the buildings and rocks and such, we're more than likely to kill crews. What is going on there? Something just exploded in the back. Is that... And, oh, it was AT infantry. I thought so. Gotta be more enemy tanks up here somewhere. Was that AT soldier again? Oh, we're reloading. Now, I've played these, these missions about uh, three or four times before deciding to make this video, and each time it has been completely different. This kind of seems to be the most uh, hazardous of my attempts so far. Uh, but, you know, oh, a KV-1. That seems to be par for the course when it comes to experiencing some of these games. Oh, good hit. He's going to have a bad day. Nice. KV-1 destroyed. Now our tank is taking some damage too, so our hull has taken a few hits that will need to be repaired. Luckily, engine and other mechanics and whatnot, the tracks are all in shape. Good shape. Enemy infantry is so hard to stop and spot. We're going to keep pushing away from the threat. Oh, you can hear footsteps on the ground. But a good early basic mission that really features a lot of... Uh, basics of killing enemy infantry, AT guns, and other tanks. Oh, enemy tank. Wow, that was very unintelligent. Put a shell right through him. Ah, oh, the tank crew is actually bailing out, too. We can shoot at them. If need be. And we did take a shot from this right side. There it is. Ha <laughs> ha! Got him. Three enemy tanks on the counterattack. Possibly more on the way.
enemy infantry here, but just riflemen. AT, AT definitely should have scored some hits and kills from behind, but I guess to balance them, they've made them a little ineffective. They are quite difficult to stop and spot. All right. A victory and almost another enemy tank kill. Let's go for a bigger mission now. That was uh, pretty uh, clunky and, pr and pretty messy, but they get better than that. Let's do another one. All right, now this map really reminds me of Kursk in Hell Let Loose. This is the Battle of the Steps, and this one really reminds me a lot of, uh, of that game and how all the battles of that and also War Thunder can play out with you being a uh, like air support or something as AI forces push forward. Our objectives now are to capture the hill, destroy enemy artillery, secure the farm, and destroy mortars. And we're going to take command of that uh, heavy 101 again as we had before. Much better environment for the Tiger tank. Previously, oh, of course, it's the biggest and the best. We wanted and absolutely had to see it. But when we were in the previous battle of Morton, that town, of course, could have been taken with a Panzer IV or a Panzer III or a group of Tigers. A much better experience, or a different experience, rather, depending on what forces you bring into the battle and uh, if you play with other uh, players or AI, for example. Here we have Panzer threes and Panzer fours and infantry all ready to go into the battle, kind of waiting on us to be the breakthrough spearhead on a battle that is the perfect example of really how this game should be played. Perfect environment for the Tiger and great for some of the artillery and airstrikes that we can call in too, although we're probably going to avoid some of that because, well, it just gives us less targets to shoot at and is a little less, um, you know, it's a little less fun. So let's push forward and try to identify enemy targets. We're already seeing some flashes in the distance. So let's go ahead and find some enemy tanks. There's one already. Boom. Goodbye. We destroyed an enemy. Enemy AT gun there spotted as well, just behind. Ready. So an enemy trench here spotted on the left side with another enemy tank here. Answer, uh, rather... T-34s, KV-1s, maybe even some KV-2s. And I hear what Ready. sounds to be artillery firing off. Enemy destroyed. Maybe uh, grads or something like that from the enemy. And look at that. Cool. Our infantry pushing forward. And look at this guy carrying the MG-34 or 42 over his shoulder. Infantry squads going forward, supported by tanks. Very cool. They're heading in to uh, take those trenches. Let's take that AT gun out. Oh, and shells are coming in to destroy our friendly tanks, too. Boom, baby. Now, luckily, we do have... Whoa, look at them go. <laughs> luckily, we do have smoke rounds ready to go to protect our tank if we uh, get spotted by the enemy and cannot return fire. A couple of tanks there looking for more AT guns. Uh, but we have ourselves a tank here. Take out the closest target with the Tiger. A little bit of a miss. The uh, controls are incredibly sensitive. And I hope that there will be some more, uh, perhaps, better way to command the uh, tank turret, like, for example, with WASD when you're in this mode, to really just get a fine-tuned uh, movement of the turret, which would make taking out these tanks at distance a little bit better. Of course, you're a tiger, and that's exactly what you want to do, is engage... Uh, from range against enemy tanks that can't even engage you. They're not even shooting back. Or there's just too many targets to do so. And you can see the tank crews bailing out again. And you can see enemy infantry retreating. As our forces push forward. Enemy tank destroyed. Anything moving in? Looks like their forces are actually retreating up to the top of the hill. Ooh, and we've got some sort of a AT gun engaging us. Or is that a bazooka? Ready. That was a Ziz-3 AT gun. Wow, enemy tank way up there. That's crazy range. Enemy destroyed. Well, it looks like we've driven the enemy from the first point of battle. A lot of the infantry is fleeing. A lot of the tanks have been destroyed. AT gun there. Ready. Beautiful. We'll keep chipping away at those defenses Ready. to make it easier for our infantry and tanks to push forward. Another target destroyed. We're looking for anything in a large cluster, such as this. Infantry and trenches, though, are not really too much of a concern for our armored forces or our infantry. 
They should be able to take that out rather easily. Maybe enemy reinforcements coming in. Alright, let's continue to push forward. Okay. Well, so far so good. Gotta say, I really like the uh, skybox here. I really like the uh, grass and uh, how everything appears. And as I had mentioned before, when we were at the base, it would be cool to see some of these missions at different times of the year. Perhaps, um, you know, some alternative reality to the same battlefields, different weather, maybe to change things up just a little bit to make it more interesting and uh, increase the replayability of a possible dynamic campaign where you can choose to attack one um, region, city, or location over another. Lots of infantry movement over here. It looks like they're on the other side of the hill, though, either getting to the defenses there or possibly trying to come over the hill to reinforce. I think we're going to go between these two, though. A little unfair advantage, though, for the Soviets. They've got a lot more troops in the trenches than we have attacking, and uh, as you all probably know, it takes more of an attacking force to dislodge a defending force, at least in... Uh, this war with this technology, if you've got, uh, I don't know, 50 men in a trench, you're probably going to want about 100 to dislodge them to account for losses and to overwhelm them and keep them pinned down while friendly forces push forward. And as we get closer, we could have AT teams hidden in the grass. Hope we don't have a uh, AT gun there. Seems to be just an infantry squad, but let's just be on the safe side there. Okay, it looks like they're inside of a trench. Ready. Oh, that did seem to be AT. Hmm, look at that, a Maxim crew. That's awesome. Wow, and really well dug in. Ready. Oh, and an AT gun hidden up close. I didn't even see it. Wow. Impressive. Ready. Really have to do a lot of work to survey the land. Brushing all these forces out of the way. Oh, yeah, KV-1 up there. Reloading now. Seems like we're taking hits from uh, machine guns, small arms fire. There we are. Soviets blocking all of our rounds with their face, it seems. Looks like all but one there eliminated. Ooh. What the hell was that? Looked like a hit to the engine, but uh, only the armor has been damaged, so. Seems like there could be a little work on the uh, precise hits. Hi. There you are. Angle our armor a little bit. There we go. Now, of course, we could clear out everything on the right side, but um, I think we'll leave that for the friendlies on the right side, and we're just going to capture the hill and prepare for what will obviously be a large counterattack. And there could be a river up here, or maybe it's... Oh, maybe that's anti-tank ditches that we saw dug out, although it did seem to be a natural body of water. It is entirely possible that the enemy maybe dug a canal and then ditches to fill them with water and mines to make it even more difficult to cross. Or just natural rain. Alright, we're probably going to see a lot of enemy units here. Not seeing too much. Could be a tank directly in front. 
It indeed is. Enemy destroyed. Honestly, sometimes a, a bush like that will look like a tank just because they're kind of the, <laughs> the same color palette. <laughs> and some music certainly indicates a possible counterattack. See if we can look for smoke on the horizon. Dust from enemy tanks. Destroyed house there. Tank giving itself away there. Ooh. Much better exposed target. My mouse is at the lowest sensitivity possible, and sometimes you need it up, sometimes you need it down. Tank crew bailing there. Try to keep it range. Oh, damn. Tank Squad. This game is awesome. Hello again there, friends and fans. Raptor here, and available now as a free demo on Steam during the Steam Next event. Tank Squad is a single-player, up to four-player cooperative tank shooting, War Thundery, Hell Let Loose type simulator that really does a good job of simulating tanks both in battle and and also during their downtime. The splash screen does a good job of showing you that, of course, when your tank takes battle, you have to go somewhere to get uh, repaired. 